everyone. I'm going to be showing you how to create a budget sheet in Microsoft Excel. There are better programs to use, but Microsoft Excel is a program that most everybody has and is simple to use, so this is what we will be using. What you see on your screen now is the completed budget form that we will be creating. It may look overwhelming to those who do not have much experience with Microsoft Excel, but don't worry, it's actually very simple and I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. A lot of the formatting or the coloring if you see the greens and the, the, the lavenders and the, uh, the gradients and whatever, those will come later. Those aren't important to the function of the budget. They just make things easier to understand for the user. And you can do that later, but I will show you how to do it. First thing you're going to want to do when you start with a budget sheet, you start with a, obviously you start with a uh, blank sheet, a blank project. Highlight. We're just going to create the width of the project. Highlight all the, the columns or all the boxes in that row and merge them together. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to put in, you're going to format the cell first, right click, format cells, text. And then you're going to enter February 2013, the current month that we are in. This creates a heading for your page. Now we want to create a way to keep track of all of your money. Um, a budget is more than just knowing how much money you have and what you're spending, but it's where that money is going so that you can temper it and save yourself money in the future. So this hypothetical family is a two-parent, three-child home, and I'm going to set up their, a list of their normal expenses across this row. When you set up your own budget, you'll want to create your own list of expenses, your own list of regular monthly expenses that you can count on to happen every month and this is where you want to be able to keep track of where your money is going. Okay, so what I've done is I've entered in the list of monthly expenses for this family as they would expect them to be. They have a mortgage, they have a car payment, they have student loans, then they've got their groceries, their utilities, their gas money for their vehicles, a monthly date night, following the Old, old Testament, they pay tithing to the lo local church, they have three children who are in school, the father is a teacher, and then their other miscellaneous expenses. I am a big, I am huge on formatting and I like my pages to look nice. You do not have to follow the formatting steps and I am going to try to push through them quickly, not to slow down the video. I will do a later video on formatting. Now in keeping track of your money, you want to be able to show how much money you spent last month, how much money you're spending this month, and how much you're hoping to spend in the next in the following months. You need to have appropriate rows and I'm going to set those up. Now if, at any sing and now, if at any point in time you add in text and it does not fit like this, just double click on the, the line between the two columns that are not fitting and it'll adjust automatically for you. Now everything in this box is going to be monetary value. It's all going to be numbers. So I highlight the box and just click the money. It turns it into accounting. Now anything I enter in here are going to be monetary values. So this family, because their budget is just starting, they don't have records of what they spent in the previous month. So I'm going to enter zero in all of those rows and we'll, I'll show you how to use last month figures when we get to the next sheet. Now I'm just going to change these things down here really quick. I double click and put February, double click and put March, double click and put April. We're going to have one sheet for every month. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in the numbers here of what the family expects to spend. Now this is something where the father and the mother need to sit down and actually plan out and talk about what they're going to spend this month. This is where a budget becomes difficult because most people, this is where the discipline comes in. Most people aren't willing to sit down and figure out where they're going to put their money. Most people just spend shooting from the hip and that's where they lose it. So if you're going to actually do this budget, you need to commit to yourself right now that you and your spouse or your significant or whomever or if it's just you that you are going to sit down once a month and figure out what you're going to spend and why so I'm gonna enter in what this family we're gonna call them the Johnson's what the Johnson's are planning on spending and these figures that you're about to see represent probably an hour maybe two hours maybe 15 minutes of conversation where they focused on this issue. These numbers 
These three numbers are their debt numbers. They're trying to pay off a mortgage, they're trying to pay off a car, and they're trying to pay off student loans. In order for any budget to truly be effective, the user needs to accept that debt is binding and it's hard to calculate the interest rates. And so this family is now realized this and they're going to get out of debt. And we're going to be creating an entirely separate sheet for debt management. But I'm going to do that later. These three, they may not have that much control over how much they spend, but the rest of this, they may. It's Valentine's month, Valentine's month, they're going to have a little bit more of an expensive Valentine's. They've got two vehicles, utilities, groceries for a family of five, they've got kids in school, the father's a teacher, etc. Now in this row, this is how much they're going to be spending throughout the month. I'm just going to enter zeros in there so we can see that it's a part of the game. And in this row, balance left, this is going to be the sum total, or rather the balance, of what they've spent throughout the month. Okay, now this down here at the bottom is what we're going to create right here. I'm putting it down here so you can see what the end product is and then what you're going to see and then how to create it. We want to create, keep track of the total income of the family. We also want to compare it to the previous month's income. Now you have to worry about, now we're going to have an allotment. This figure that will be right here is going to be the sum total of that. You've got the money, how much you've spent, and the and the figure that will be right here will, will be a soft total of how much you've spent throughout the month because you're going to be updating your budget throughout the month here on this program. Well, and then we're going to have a balance being the difference between this number and this number. What we spent last month, because that's such a long one, I'm going to take those two, merge them together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show the values of what they have in their checking account and in their savings account. At the beginning of the month and at the end of the month. And then the balance between the two. These figures will be monetary, as will all of these. Now again, this is all, f now what I'm about to do is a bunch of formatting. You can see what it looks like here. Okay, now that you have this set up, I'm going to show you a bit of formula, how to use formulas to your advantage. Allotment. Like I said, this total equals the sum of this. There's a really easy way to do this instead of getting out a calculator and punching those numbers in and then punching that number in there. Just highlight this box, come up here and click on Auto Sum. And that says right here, this box equals the sum of C3, C3 through C9. Now that's not what we want. So you're just gonna take Highlight and just drag all the way across. Now that box equals the sum of B4 to L4. And you press enter. And it auto sums for you. Now one of the best things about that is, like I said, we were gonna calculate this number later. Let's say after we calculate it, they decide the total is about 600. Watch this number when I press enter. Well, watch Watch this number when I press enter. It automatically changes. The formula is still there and anything we change in here will affect it. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. So now that stays there and you don't want to use you don't there have no reason to adjust that anymore. Now this box right here is going to equal the sum total of that. Okay, so if I enter 2, that didn't do anything. So you have to actually use the auto sum. Highlight the box, press auto sum, highlight the row, bingo. Now it shows 0 because we have all zeros in this column. If you enter 300, it adds 300. If you enter in 10,000, it puts 10,000. You can leave that there. Now balance, because again, allotment is what you're planning on spending. Spent is what you've actually spent. So balance is going to equal, you press equal, this, you just click on it, minus that, enter. So the balance shows 3,851 because 
obviously 3,851 minus zero equals that. However, if you were to spend $1,000 on your mortgage as you were planning, automatically enters it there, automatically subtracts it there. Then you spend your $285 there, you spend your student payment of 356 there. You'll notice these numbers change automatically for you. Once you set up the formula in these boxes, you have no reason to enter numbers in there manually. This is your zone of alteration. You can even change this color. You can even change the color of these boxes as a reminder to yourself that you don't want to actually edit anything in them. However, you know, whatever color you want to do, let's just do that. That's a reminder to you that you don't want to actually enter numbers into those boxes. Again, this number we don't know because they just started doing this this month. Same thing with last month's income. Total income, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, let's say at the beginning of February, this family has $8,012 in their checking and $2,001 or whatever into their savings account. And what's gonna happen is at the end of the month or at the beginning of March, either one, they're basically the same thing, the Johnsons are going to sit down and they're going to look at their checking and savings account again and they're going to enter in whatever the total is. Now this, you do do this manually, there's no formula for that on here. So let's say at the end of the month, obviously you, at, at this point, in the beginning of the month, the Johnsons would not be entering these numbers in, but I'm going to show you how to set up the formula. Because right now the current values are zero. Well let's just leave it like that. Now this box is going to be the same idea as this. These numbers minus these numbers to equal this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The simple, simple math equals, come up here to type your formula. You want, you put them in parentheses just like you would in math class. This plus this, close the parentheses, minus this plus this close parentheses. I forgot to put in the first one. That's okay. Go back up there, add it in. So now what it's doing, what this box is going to do is going to add the two numbers from these two figures and add the two numbers from these two boxes and then subtract the second from the first. I press enter. We show 10,013, which is the sum of that. Now if at the end of the month our total is 7,954 and 2,001 and 03 then we've actually lost money. It shows that we've actually made money, but we haven't, okay? So we need to change the formula because it's not right. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take that, you can just control X and move it to the front. Control paste minus, oops, and enter. Now what it shows is we actually lost $58, which is accurate because this total is less than this total. This is the end of part one of the video. We've just begun. Please hit the link for part two to learn more.